and the summer wind The summer wind came blowing in from across the sea It lingered there to touch your hair and to walk with me All summer long we sang a song and then we strolled that golden sand Two sweethearts and the summer wind My favorite scene from this episode. Just keep the wheels steady. Pull this back if you want to slow down and forward for faster. There you go. So tell me, why does this casino mean so much to you? Marty's an entrepreneur, kind of like yourself. He saw a need. No one needs another casino. Our investors would disagree. Yeah? And who are they? They want to remain silent investors. Oh, that's a non-answer answer. You have awful research. Pretty sure you know who they are. The gambling commission's going to investigate. We're prepared. It's all legal. What we don't have are the votes. You have any ideas? Take a look at Foreman's file. I'm not comfortable with that. It's a dirty business. But if you really believe in what you're doing, sometimes the ends justify the means. It just depends how important it is to you. But I have some ideas. We'll talk them through. Right. You know what? We're getting close. Let me take over. Oh, great. And this pulls away, too. If you notice in that scene, it's very, um... To me, the, the sound of the boat is music. Um, it's very musical. And in, in its sense of... Uh, uh, bringing on tension of the scene, even though what they're discussing may not seem that uh, full of tension, but it, it adds tension to the feeling of the scene, and the boat is total in music. And that actually does happen in season one. There's uh, a scene, and I can't remember which one it is, and I'll I'll get it, I'll remember it later. <laughs> but uh, it's a scene that the, 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 the sound of the boat adds to it, adds to the music that's going on, and it actually harmonically uh, challenges the music and drives it forward. It's it's so great to see that. I love it when that is expressed so whole so wholeheartedly here and in such on such a subtle yet um subtle yet in your in your face level, I think. Anyway, um Hello and welcome to the Fanatics of Film. My name is Ben and this is my review of Ozark season 2.2 so uh what a great season so far i've said before that my biggest standout of course in at least so far uh is uh ruth and so we have our symbolism here our symbolic moments that we always uh analyze here so the beginning of season two episode season two episode two we have our Nice little, um, it looks like a crack pipe, or it could be just a pot pipe, I'm not sure. It's a pipe of smoking drugs of some kind. And then we have someone uh, with disabilities, and I guess that's the uh, that's going to be our character named Devereaux, who sells the boat 
to them. And then we have, of course, the medall a medallion, which I'm not sure with how that plays into. Oh, yeah, that's the medallion that um, he uh, asks her about later on. Um, and then, of course, the crashed car that we see at the end here that brings um, um, uh, Colonel, or excuse me, brings Petty back into it. And he is Roy Petty. And Roy Petty is a, um, he's just a detective. I was trying to figure out his rank. If he was, I guess, just Detective Roy Petty. Which is very, he's an extremely interesting character this season, especially because he's being kind of presented as a villain. And that, in and of itself, is interesting because it's, in most of these, like with Breaking Bad, you know, Hank was kind of the hero in the anti-hero story, where this, they're, they're leading, you know, in my per what I'm kind of gathering from this is that you have um, uh, only only one person who's coming out of this um, kind of a better person, and that is um, Ruth. Ruthie. Ruthie tends to be uh, some really great uh, camera work here. We all we're so far we're having these breakfast scenes at the beginning to start out the day for the episode, and. Um, um, this is the moment where Jonah uh, mentions to uh, to Marty, his dad, that um, the slots are the way where the money is. So um, I personally predict that uh, Jonah will be skimming off the... Somehow he's going to be getting into these uh, slots and uh, skimming off of them somehow. I don't know. Maybe not. <laughs> he knows that that's where the money is, so... And uh, so they're looking up against the vote. They're being up against that. Charles Wilkes, that's his name, played by Darren Goldstein. And Charles Wilkes, his character says, I mean, he's, Charles Wilkes is saying that you need to turn four and, uh, you know, Wendy's just be like, you know, why do I need you if I, uh, <laughs> if I have to do all the heavy, lift, heavy lifting? She is kind of, kind of becoming a little bit annoying in this season. Um, Helen Pierce is, uh, she is on the phone here, and uh, she ends up uh, having this character that belongs in a David Lynch movie or in Twin Peaks. <laughs> this guy, um, he kind of does. He, he belongs uh, kind of in a... He, he reminds me of someone who would be in a Twin Peaks episode. Um, anyway, uh, we don't know him yet, of course. Um, Ruth... Uh, c contemplating, it's interesting to see these people, their looks on their faces when they have this bundle of money in front of them. They're like, <laughs> you know, the thought process and what they, what kind of emotions go through them. And they, they think, they're just basically thinking of all these things they could do with this money. And it's it's definitely all relatable because it's like, what if, what would you do in, if you were in that situation? Um, and so once again, uh, of course, the Snells being childish brats about everything. <laughs> Constantly, uh, do they, you know, do they take offense to to that, and you know, basically saying that, you know, you know, why should, why should they even question our product when it's just the greatest, and we counted the money, and but anyway, uh, just, just constantly being ridiculous. Um, this one's kind of an interesting scene because this intro reintroduces the um, the essence, or at least the thought process of God in. Um, in Wendy's life and her experiences, even though she does not want it there. She does not want the essence of God there. And it's really great because she's at this, you know, this right wing Republican um, uh, kind of a meeting, uh, get together, try to win over some people and uh, working through that. And it says, you know, and we are redeemed, but not through corruptible things. And they talk about through the blood of Jesus. And that's the name of this episode. Precious blood of Jesus. Uh, but that's a really interesting point because that brings us to the next, the very next scene with her in it. She is um, just minding her own business, trying to think of only the things that she wants to kind of in her own world. But she stumbles upon our old, our preacher. And I found his character to be really really i i love his character because he's the one guy once again another hero in, a, in an anti-hero uh world um he's the one guy who chose um 
to uh, to uh, to oppose um, such a such crazy evil, this large crazy evil that is basically toppling has toppled his world and changed him and manipulated everything that he has. And I, it's like you want some reparations or some sort of some kind of uh, um, not word wouldn't be a revenge, but um, you want some sort of re retaliation you want because now it's like more particularly because he's because he's without he has his baby, but he doesn't have his he doesn't have his um, Anyway, I'm jumping ahead, <laughs> so I'm getting ahead of myself here. Um, but I'm gonna get to that in a second. Um, so this is, once again, Darlene uh, betraying who we are, talking about, we're betraying who we are. It's like, they're just, you know, checking the heroin to make sure that it's pure and you're just being a, being lame. <laughs> it's like, be good, do good business. Don't be, don't be such a baby. She's being a baby. Um, and of course, uh, Wendy's learning how to, to, Wendy is here learning how to lobby. And then we have, um, um, he's talking to this, uh, this other senator guy, other, other state senator guy. And, you know, I can't take the risks. I've got family. You would do the same. You would protect your family. And that's what he's doing. He's protecting his family. So, you know, Marty is just, uh, you know, without words for that at that point, he's just like, okay. Um, <laughs> Darlene making faces at the kid. That was kind of, uh, kind of <laughs> pretty, uh, ridiculous. So, um. And then of course, okay, okay. So this this brings us to Darlene now. What I was getting trying to get to before is that Darlene, um, you're trying. They're trying to win us over a little bit. I see the I see the plan. I see the tactic and trying to get us involved in these uh, awful characters' lives because they're so awful, such awful people. And you, they they want us to uh, feel something for them. So even though she took part in. And basically, you know, shooting a guy just because he's a red, just because they call he called them rednecks or whatever. And then um, she also uh, took part in basically, you know, killing uh, Mason's wife and uh, leaving the baby behind. It's like you'd think that she would have taken the baby because at this point she's like, then the state can come in and, and uh, evaluate your fitness. So it makes you makes you wonder. And of course. You know, they're they're basically saying, you know, it's like if you're too old, you're too old. You're not more, more than likely you're not going to be able to be an eligible parent type of thing. So, and she just gets pissed off and storms out. So that's just uh, one of those things where, you and you kind of there's moments where it's ah eh, now screw that. Um. Anyway, this is a great moment, and this is uh the, one of the biggest moments of this episode. One of the big moments from this episode uh, is that Wendy is trying to insist that they are responsible for everything. Uh, that was from episode one. That was a very important factor here is that um, um, she's trying to insist that they are they are responsible for everything. And that right it was right when they get out of the car talking to the lawyer and basically had worked something worked something out something out with the Snells. For some reason they were they were okay with the Snells killing one of their killing. Um, um, I think it was that how she tries to insist that they are responsible for everything, that none of this would have happened if it weren't for them. Marty insists that everyone is deserved of, of their fate by their own choices. And we see Wendy further wrestle with this when she sees Mason on the street here. So this is, again, this, um, brings you to, um, where she sees Mason, uh, spe speaking on the street. And this is a great scene actually, because she feels immense guilt for what's happening. She's and once again, she's realizing that, you know, her choices have led to this as well. So she's, she's definitely, uh, challenged Mason saying, where does, uh, evil come from? We know it's there, but we can't see it, right? No one knows. It's unanswered. The serpent was in the garden before Adam and Eve showed up. The bite of the apple wasn't the original sin. Lucifer, Lucifer's fa fall was. And so everything under heaven is belongs to me. He is um, omnipotent and everything. So anyway, it's, that's a really interesting point that he makes. And uh, so that's that was uh, very, 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 very cool and and connecting the last scene in my opinion it's connecting the last scene of episode one to this um 
of course, this brings back uh, this moment, uh, you know, the, his mob outfit control, the Detroit Teamsters for years are talking about the guy who's basically trying to shut them down, or at least trying to shut the bill down. And that's going to bring Buddy into the situation. I really think that Buddy um, shot and, and maybe killed uh, Jimmy Hoffa. That's just because he said that he did. <laughs> um, but it, he said it almost jokingly. Your wife's got major talent. He, you know, he wants to, you know, expressing interest in his wife. This is an ex this is an next great scene because um, Ruthie kind of steps up and kicks ass. Um, so we're negotiating now, and you know, Ruthie, I wouldn't I wouldn't <laughs> do you if your dick were made of gold. Uh, you're a mouthy person, aren't you? And you know, a person who likes to kick. And so she knocks him over. It was actually uh, a great, great, great scene. She she's uh, once again the the firecracker. That I uh, love to see in this uh, in this show. Just great, um, great moment there. Ruth Ruth is realizing that her dad will not change, and uh, even though she wants him to, she wants him to be on a straight path. She wants him to be better. She wants him to do better, but uh, obviously, um, he won't. So that is one thing that is very interesting. And uh, he, he, I think, I think this episode he hits her. Um, and then, so of course, uh, Wendy comes home and says he wanted more, <laughs> and you, you didn't want the indecent proposal. So anyway, um, and of course, last but not least, we have our moment with, uh, with um, Rachel, and Rachel is driving home on, you know, on heroin or whatever she's doing, and uh, breaks, uh, wrecks the car. At the very end of this episode, we see. Um, I think Petty, they're presenting him kind of as a villain, kind of. It's it's rather bizarre and, and nuts. So um, anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Do you uh, love this? Do you, do you love this uh, season? I do. I really do. Um, and uh, just the way they presented him is it's almost like the Joker or, or in Batman type of thing is very uh, ominous and, and very uh, scary. Um, so anyway, uh, let me know what you guys think. Sorry, this, ep this episode was a little long. I just, I didn't want to make it too long, but I think there's, it's important to make those connections. There's, there's a lot of connections that are, uh, uh, coming to light in this season. Thanks so much for watching. Hit that, uh, subscribe, uh, button, hit that, uh, like button and, um, you know, we'll see you next time. Thanks so much. Have a great day.